Hello, I'm Dr. Yasser Chanab, presenting the case retroperitoneal hemorrhage management in a coronary CTO case. Our case was a 30-year-old man with exertional chest pain from several months ago. He had no coronary effects. Perfusion scan showed anterior ischemia and his LV ejection fraction was about 50%. He referred for opening up LED occlusion in his coronary on, on his physical examination, he had abnormal reverse parabola test of right hand, so we could not use his right radial hand as an axis. We can appreciate the occlusion of LED at mid portion. Our axis was from right and left femoral artery and we use seven French sheets in both femoral arteries. We use a specially enhanced RX dual lumen microcatheter filter XTA and pilot 50 as our successful instruments. We can see in the first video how we could use enhanced RX and in our second video we use it again for recanalization of the LAD after the second diagonal. And the procedure takes about one and a half an hour and he complained about back pain and upper left limb pain during the last 30 minutes of the procedure. It's our final result. After the procedure, because of his persistent back pain and 2 gram per deciliter drop in hemoglobin, we were suspicious to retroperitoneal hemorrhage and the patient was sent to our radiology department to have an abdominal CT one hour after the procedure. You can see the retroperitoneal hematoma and here you can see how large is the retroperitoneal hemorrhage in this patient. Back to CATLAB, we injected from left side sheet and you can see the perforation of external iliac artery above inguinal ligament, the perforation of external iliac artery and extravasation of dye. The right sheet was exchanged with a 55 cm line crossover sheet and the left side sheet withdrawn and 5 ml balloon was inflated for 10 minutes and you can see how it was successful after 10 minutes in control of bleeding. There was no bleeding after 10 minutes of balloon inflation. Retroperitoneal bleeding is ranging from 0.1 to 0.7 percent of transfemoral vascular access procedures. It's associated with a very high morbidity and mortality rate as high as 20 percent patients that develop hypovolemic shock. Even though conservative approach is considered to be associated with favorable clinical outcomes, it's linked to significant morbidity prolonged hospitalization, need for multiple blood transfusions, multi-organ failure, and increased mortality rates. In summary, retroperitoneal bleeding rep uh, represents a rare but potentially deadly complication of percutaneous endovascular interventions. Endovascular management of vascular complications following percutaneous interventions seems to be a feasible and safe treatment option. Thanks for your watching.